Hello and welcome to this latest webinar in Actian's Legacy Data Warehouse Modernization Series. Today's presenter is Raghu Chakravati, our Senior Vice President of Engineering and our Chief Product Officer. If you have questions to ask, please enter them using the chat function on the right of your screen and we'll get to them at the end of the presentation. Any questions we don't get to, we'll follow up in email after the event. With that, I'll hand over to you, Raghu. Thanks for taking the time today to listen to my talk on Rethinking Teradata Migration, Seven Real World Secrets to Success. So many of you have been thinking about uh, migrating out of Teradata and other legacy data warehouses probably. Uh, and uh, some of you must have attempted it and some of you must have failed. Well, we've come to the realization it's not easy to migrate out of Teradata by now. But uh, some of the reasons you might be thinking about is because in the past few years, we have had a big data revolution with focus on the cloud, data federation and data science. This has made uh, the traditional data warehouse practices such as batch processing, ETL, curation into a central data warehouse, a thing of the past. What my customers are telling me is that they prefer a hybrid data architecture that helps them eliminate uh, data silos, uh, that provides for an elastic but cost-effective uh, solution in the cloud as well as on-prem, and a platform that enables guaranteeing SLAs on exponentially growing data. So today, um, what I'm going to do is uh, share some of the real-world secrets with you in terms of how to migrate from Teradata into a modern, elastic, hybrid cloud data warehouse like the one that Actian provides in Actian Avalanche. So let's get started. A quick introduction. Uh, I am uh, Raghu Chakravarti. I have a long pedigree in data and data warehousing systems. Uh, currently, I am the chief product officer here at Actian, where we build Avalanche, which is a highly scalable data warehouse for the hybrid cloud. Previously, I was the GM and the vice president of engineering at Teradata for the database and the advanced analytics uh, Aster uh, business. Uh, prior to Teradata, I was at Oracle via the Hyperion acquisition, uh, where I worked on multi, multi-dimensional databases like SBase. So pretty much, I've been in the data and the data warehousing space for, uh, for a while now. Uh, if your passion is data and analytics, uh, please connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. I do share a lot of insights as I learn them from our customers and partners. And um, I'm pretty active both on LinkedIn and Twitter. Let's start with a quick introduction to Actian and what we do and what we offer our customers in terms of products and platforms, and also strategies that we give uh, to our customers to migrate from these legacy systems into a modern architecture. Uh, Actian is based in Palo Alto, California, here in the heart of Silicon Valley. We have been around for over 20 years and our expertise ranges from databases, which is both online as well as analytical, and uh, data integration products, all the way to the edge where we have an embedded database that helps our customers uh, really realize the value all the way from the edge into the cloud. We have over 3,000 customers around the world, both in Fortune 100 as well as in SMBs, that trust us with some of their really mission critical workloads that help run their business and realize value from the data that they are generating. And Actian, we hang our hat on um, our performance capabilities compared to any of the uh, on-prem as well as cloud data warehouse solutions that exist out there. And um, we have over 53 patents that uh, we possess uh, to really prove our and technology uh, out to our customers. Teradata migration is definitely not easy. Like I mentioned earlier, many, many Teradata migration attempts have failed 
due to a lot of reasons. Most of the Teradata installations have existed for 10 or more years, typically, and has built a lot of tech debt over the years, which makes it really hard to yank out. Design paradigms like workload management, proprietary data structures, custom scripting, worked for administrators 10 years ago for an on-prem deployment, but they are really not relevant anymore in the current elastic cloud-based environments. Plus, uh, Teradata on-prem is still a highly scalable and a highly performant database, and you need a replacement data warehouse that can really match the performance and the scale that Teradata provides, yet uh, give you the cost benefits that you're looking for. You need a partner in all of this who can help you navigate through this journey. And at Actian, we promise to be exactly that partner. So to the real meat of things now, uh, let's get into the real world secrets in terms of what it takes uh, to migrate out of Teradata. So there are seven real important things that you got to consider to be successful. So let's start with the first one. The most important step is obviously to choose the right platform to migrate to. Our customers are saying uh, scale, performance, and the cost are the most important criteria for them. Uh, but one important decision point is the proven expertise uh, to migrate, uh, which reduces the coefficient of friction, in my opinion, uh, thus lending uh, themselves to straightforward automated migration. So look for somebody who has a proven expertise uh, in doing so. The next one is the assessment part and the migration part. Typically, documentation of the Teradata environment would be lacking and uh, would have been done by someone who, who did this years ago and a lack of usage details can really hamper the migration. The migration must include a automated assessment tool that can identify specific queries, Teradata scripts, and custom code that is submitted to the Teradata environment. And uh, the migration tool uh, should help convert that to the target data warehouse like an avalanche. At least 90% of these artifacts should be automatically migrated. And uh, at Actian, what we provide is a schema assessment and a migration tool that uh, helps with this kind of automation. Over 75% of data migrations fail uh, from Teradata or run over budget. So I would say don't go down this path alone. Choose the right SI partner. They are the ones who can actually guide you through and help you uh, with this whole migration thing. At Actian, we partner with the leading SIs who provide uh, proven expertise in this conversion and we really partner with them to help you get through this uh, migration. Uh, use uh, the automated schema and the migration tool like I talked about earlier in the code migration uh, tool to actually perform the migration. Typically about 90% of the assessed uh, SQL stored procedures and UDF code would migrate automatically if you use such a tool, but the last 10% would need some manual migration and this is why uh, you need a, a proven SI partner to help you perform these manual migration steps. The next uh, critical one is to build a target uh, environment such as the one that you can build with the Avalanche. So in this thought process, what I would say is instead of duplicating the way you built the Teradata environment by buying for the peak loads, uh, build the target environment uh, so that you buy enough for the migration and then elastically scale uh, for the future. So make sure that uh, your target can elastically scale up as you need to expand. And uh, that way you can plan for the future, but buy what you need to buy right now. Then comes the actual data extraction and the loading part. Here you would ingest the schema, data, and validate the, uh, the migrated data uh, using uh, the actual coding exercise that you did. And last but uh, not the least, the modernization exercise. 
a lot of migration fail because many migration projects intertwine migration with modernization. They get bundled into a single exercise, which is the typical symptom for failure. Successful migrations have always been performed uh, with the migration first and then modernization, which might include how to optimize, build uh, new data pipelines, and then really scale your data warehouse for your future needs. So let's get into some of the details of each one of these critical steps to make it a successful migration. The first one, uh, as I mentioned earlier, is to choose the right platform. I just wanted to give you a comparison chart of how a modern cloud hybrid data warehouse like Avalanche can really match up against Teradata and its valued strengths and really provide a viable solution for you to migrate from Teradata so you can go to the hybrid cloud. The key things to look for is how you can manage uh, and match Teradata's performance. Uh, with Avalanche or a provider as such, we can provide up to a 10x higher performance built on scalable commodity hardware, if it's on-prem, and really match the appliance capabilities that uh, Teradata provides. Obviously, as you're thinking about migration, you're thinking about a hybrid solution, and Avalanche really offers that hybrid capability where you can ex execute a lot of workloads on-prem, but also extend and offload some of the workloads to the multiple cloud environments, whether it's AWS or Azure, in a managed uh, service. With that comes the lower TCO, and at Avalanche, we are able to offer 50% uh, lower OPEX uh, in term when compared to Teradata, and also a predictable migration path, which is really important, as you make your choice uh, for the Teradata replacement. And with our schema and data migration tool that we provide, we are able to migrate 90% of the queries that execute in Teradata, whether from the downstream or upstream systems, and they can be converted automatically. And the rest of the 10% can be performed by a partner, like an SI partner that we partner with. The second is um, to really choose a, a data platform which provides for an automated assessment and a migration tool. This tool is really needed because, like I said earlier, uh, a lot of the development happened in Teradata maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, and a lot of this, um, the queries as well as the configurations is not documented well. So you really need an automated tool to assess the source Teradata system, identify all of the tables and uh, the other artifacts that exist, and help convert data types that uh, needs to map to the target system. Uh, you also need to identify what were the queries that were submitted uh, to Teradata from various systems, whether it's a BI tool or an ETL process, or even uh, in our data load utilities, uh, and analyze them to see if they are compatible, and if not, make automated changes to the queries so you can really build a target system away from Teradata, which uh, handles the queries without really uh, having to make changes to the upstream or downstream tools and utilities. Uh, the migration tool also helps convert uh, the DDL, the scripts, uh, like BT scripts, stored procedures, and UDFs that might be defined in the Teradata system to the target system like an avalanche, right? It also helps identify artifacts that need some manual migration because, like I said, 90% can be converted automatically, but a few uh, need to be manually migrated uh, because of the complexity involved. And it's really key that we identify these uh, artifacts up front so we can really plan and do a, a manual migration of these scripts. And also the tool on the migration side helps perform the DDL extracts and the data extracts from the Teradata system. So it's really, as you can see, uh, this is the, lo the longest or the most time-consuming and uh, the 
the most risky step in the whole migration process, an automated tool will really help mitigate a lot of the risks. The next comes the step where you actually choose an SI partner. As uh, we have gone through this, it's a really complex task uh, to migrate out of Teradata. It really needs a good SI partner who has proven expertise in the past, who have done it before, and also approaches the migration in a phased manner to mitigate risks and maximize the probability of uh, success in terms of migration. Uh, at Actian, we partner with all of the leading SIs who have done um, Teradata migrations in the past, including HCL, which is an investor in Actian, and help you really be successful uh, in bringing um, a right partner to help you migrate through to the next-gen cloud data warehouse. The next step is to actually do the development of the migration and uh, both of the schema as well as the data. Um, what you really want to do in this step is use the automated tool, but also minimize the changes to the upstream and downstream application code as much as possible. So let's say you use an Informatica or a data stage to move data in uh, to Teradata. Typically, um, what data stage Informatica would do is produce a flat file uh, which it dumps in a data lake or in a staging environment. And those scripts and the processes don't have to change, right? Because it is a flat file that gets consumed by Teradata scripting in the process. But what the tool needs to do is to convert the the data load capabilities that is native to Teradata, whether you use a fast load or any such utilities, uh, the migration tool will help you define and uh, convert those scripts directly into Avalanche or Actian format so that you can automatically upload the flat files uh, without much uh, coding exercise to uh, process the data, right? Uh, it also helps identify components to migrate and it uh, the components and the, the artifacts include tables, stored procedures, and scripts uh, that put, could potentially use by uh, downstream applications like a Tableau or, or a Click as well. Uh, what is also important to migrate is the existing users and the profiles of the users, uh, including security policies, uh, into the target system. So those don't have to be reinvented. And a lot of these policies would not be documented well. So a tool like what we provide would really help do that. And one of the important phases is as the tool uh, identifies and lists out all the tables, uh, it's important to identify a lot of the junk data that might have collected inside the Teradata system uh, over a period of time and really not uh, migrate that junk data out. This could be temporary tables, uh, some, uh, some user schema that might not uh, be needed anymore. So things like that needs to be identified in the process so that you can really speed up the whole migration. The important thing and the next step is to actually build the target environment. So in this thing, it really needs a good collaboration between the customer and Actian and the SI partner to help you uh, with the journey to the cloud. A lot of the customers right now are being forced directly to go from a Teradata or an on-prem environment natively to a managed service because the managed uh, cloud data warehouse service providers only exist in the cloud or in a specific cloud like AWS or only on Azure or AWS. It's really hard to do that, right? Uh, we all know that. Um, so what Actian provides is a flexible approach and a flexible migration path uh, based on your current needs and also help you with your future uh, needs, whether it's in cloud or in the hybrid cloud. So one of the paths is obviously natively to a managed service in a multi-cloud environment. So Avalanche can uh, replace the Teradata data warehouse in an AWS or an Azure environment if you so choose to go directly to the cloud from an on-prem uh, 
deployment. But typically our customers choose the hybrid cloud approach where they run um, the majority of the workloads, um, you know, once it's migrated on-prem. But uh, some of the workloads like marketing and hyper-personalization type uh, workloads, which are more newer and greener in the cloud. And then eventually over a couple of years, migrate from on-premise to the cloud and have a balance and still execute in a hybrid manner, but have a balance of workloads uh, which run on-premise and in the cloud. And only Avalanche can offer that hybrid nature because um, compared to a Snowflake or a Redshift, which can exist only in the clouds, we have the same environment and the same engines running on-prem. So you can really enable multi-cloud and uh, hybrid cloud um, queries and approaches. And one of the key things that we employ is a federated query approach so that um, we can federate queries between clouds across the avalanche deployments that happen there. Some of our customers also choose directly on-prem. You know, I just want to do a lift and shift and really modernize um, my data warehouse environment, but I really need to stay on-prem. And that is uh, another choice uh, for us as well. Now that uh, we have done it, like we really need to start building the environment. Uh, one of the criteria or the main criteria is listed over here, right? Uh, you really need to size the environment that you want to build uh, for migration success and not really plan for peak loads. With Avalanche, you can really expand elastically later on and invest later on if needed for peak loads and you can burst to the cloud as needed. But you really want to size um, the environment uh, to make the migration successful. Think about offloading uh, workloads to the cloud as um, you do this so that you can really uh, say like, how much do I want on-prem versus what I want in the cloud and size uh, and purchase equipment as well as licensing accordingly so that you can ensure that your uh, SLAs are still complied with as uh, how the Teradata environment used to operate. Now it's really time, now that we have set up the environment and you have the schema as well as uh, the conversion scripts already, it's time to perform the data extract and load. And as you can see uh, here, we really have a good methodology uh, working with the SI partners in terms of migrating uh, from uh, Teradata. So uh, we, you can use the Teradata native fast export process to actually extract the tables and the schema out and uh, stage it in a staging environment. And um, with Avalanche, we use uh, Spark loaders, which load data in parallel, as well as creating the schema. Uh, we use Spark loaders to load uh, data into Avalanche once um, it is extracted out. In this particular case, we show an example of how uh, the data was extracted out to an S3 bucket, and uh, we load uh, the data in parallel into Avalanche uh, from the staging area. Uh, staging is key uh, so that you actually separate out the process and then de-risk the whole de-risk the whole migration uh, properly. Uh, so this is uh, our standard methodology that we use to migrate data out. As a final step, once you get through all of this, uh, is the actual modernization. With Avalanche, the possibilities are really endless, right? So the main thing is don't mix the migration and the modernization into one large step. And that is the main cause for a lot of the failures that have happened in the past. Do the migration first, and then start thinking about all of these steps in terms of modernization. First is obviously to optimize and tune for the new SLAs that you could create uh, with uh, a modern data warehouse like Avalanche. Now you can start building modern data pipelines, whether it's on Spark or Presto or any of your uh, data pipeline uh, provider of choice or technology of choice. Now you can start building new data pipelines and expand as you can do elastically with Avalanche and uh, start building out new uh, use cases in terms of uh, analytics 
and data science. The elastic scaling and the cloud bursting capabilities really give you the agility that you need uh, to provide to your uh, business users as well as data scientists so that they are not really waiting on you know, instances to be provisioned as these could be done in an instant. And um, also with Avalanche, you can really create sandbox environments pretty quickly and provide those to your users so that they can really become productive in a quick manner rather than having to wait for uh, provisioning and IT processes and so on. Uh, building uh, HA and DR practices uh, can be done in a modernization exercise once the migration is done. And you can really uh, you know, start thinking about this with our partners and uh, scale out the environment and provide for the SLAs that you need to provide to your customers. So those were um, the, the details on the, on the steps and a lot of the secrets are pretty simple, right? If you think about it, don't mix migration and modernization. Uh, don't build for peak loads. Really uh, think about a hybrid nature in which you want to operate and don't get locked into any particular managed service provider. And uh, that's exactly what uh, we can provide at Acti. So here are some of the best practices just to summarize, right? Um, do it in a phased approach. Mitigate the risks and maximize the probability of success by taking a phased approach and the seven phases um, is what I described there. Really important thing again is don't migrate the junk data. What really has business value uh, in the current environment is what you need to uh, move and migrate and just archive the rest. You know, Keep it around, but you don't really need to migrate them. Have a clear performance uh, requirement in terms of what you had with Teradata and what you want to go uh, for with the future. This will really help you define the SLAs going forward and really challenge uh, your business users as well as your IT uh, to come up with you know, the next generation thinking that's needed now that you have really uh, migrated to a modern cloud data warehouse. Always have a well-conceived rollback plan in case there are contingencies, there will always be some business uh, contingency that comes up that you need to put in place. And uh, a good SI partner uh, will really focus on this particular step to make sure the business continuity happens. And um, also definitely involve your customers and your business partners in the validation uh, so that um, both the upstream and the downstream systems would function properly uh, once the migration is uh, complete. So now that you understand a lot of what it takes, I just want to highlight in a couple of slides uh, what uh, at Actian we provide to really reduce the risk and help you with the whole migration part. Avalanche, uh, when deployed in a hybrid deployment capability, can really leverage its uh, innovative federated query, as you can see at the bottom there, capacity uh, that enables uh, Avalanche to simultaneously access data and query in multiple Avalanche domains. This is really key because now you can really not rely on a particular location or a particular service provider in terms of uh, running your data warehouse, you can put it wherever you want and distribute your workloads accordingly, uh, whether you want to run it on-prem or in the cloud. And this is a key differentiation that you cannot uh, currently have uh, with Teradata. We really reduce the risk uh, for you to um, go at your own pace in terms of how you want to do cloud adoption and um, not rely on um, or do do like a lift and shift approach, which introduces a lot of risks. Uh, we, as I talked about, we provide flexible migration paths uh, in terms of uh, three uh, different paths that you want to do, whether it's totally to the cloud or in a hybrid nature, as well as um, uh, a completely an on-prem solution. Um, over 90% of the scripts will be automatically migrated. Whatever runs in the current Teradata data warehouse will be automatically migrated to Avalanche 
um, with a 90% uh, rate, and the last 10% will be manually migrated, whether it's schema or data or store procedures or UDFs, right? So that 90% automatic migration really improves the success rate and reduces the risk um, a lot. Uh, we do, like I said, engage with strategic partners to enable the migration. And also, uh, as you can see in these boxes, you really don't need to change your data sources or the ETLs or on the downstream side, the data science tools and the BI tools that currently work with your Teradata environment. Uh, we can work with all of the existing tools uh, that are popular, which we uh, actually certify with. So you don't really need to make any changes or uh, really minimize the changes for the upstream and the downstream uh, tools that you use. And that really improves the, the success of the migration that you're looking for. Finally, just a quick um, in-depth look at what the Actian solution and the architecture looks like. So here is a high level overview of um, the Actian architecture, and it's designed from the ground up for unique demands of the enterprise class, multi-cloud and uh, computing environments that you're demanding. And it has the ability to seamlessly run on-premise as well as hybrid, like we talked about. The key to this architecture is the ability to easily fit and perform in an established uh, legacy environment, which, which is key to you guys, right? And to minimize the disruption and maximize the actionable insight that we can produce across the organization. This is the result of a next generation high performance platform that is optimized for uh, compute, memory, and storage. And it's the only platform built from the ground up for intelligent multi-cloud hybrid environments. As you can see, it's broken down into five layers. The top layer is a persona-based ecosystem tools where we really address the needs of the business analyst, data scientist, and the data engineer to really bring uh, their tool of choice because we support all of these tools using standard technologies like ODBC, JDBC with a .NET Python plugins um, that they really can bring uh, their tools of choice to work with a modern environment. Um, that uh, really scales as well as integrates with the tools of their choice. Um, we are performance optimized uh, at the compute level um, where we actually optimize uh, by leveraging the CPU cache uh, and uh, using industry standard SQL uh, you know, to, to support that, right? Uh, vector processing is key and this is one of the, the modern technology uh, uh, improvements that Avalanche has done where we really leverage the, the CPU cache using L1 and L2 as well as really enhance this performance using vectorized processing rather than uh, what the, the legacy uh, data warehouses do. Uh, we are also uh, intelligently optimized on the storage side where we can scale elastically and we can leverage any of your existing data lake implementations on-prem, whether it's HDFS or in the cloud using ADLS and EBS, and that's where we store our data. Uh, we also have uh, inbuilt Spark uh, integration to go access data from anywhere it might reside uh, to anything that Spark supports, right? Any connectors that Spark supports. Uh, we also run on-prem as well as in AWS and Azure. So uh, Avalanche gives you that hybrid nature and the hybrid capability that you're looking for, and it is delivered as a fully managed service. So with that, uh, hopefully you guys have a good view into um, how Teradata migrations can happen, and it can be done in a successful manner. But it really needs a good partnership between you, the customer, as well as the target data warehouse in terms of what Actian provides, as well as with an SI partner. So hopefully you got um, some good insights into how to make this successful. And I'm really looking forward to working with uh, all of you uh, in a successful uh, migration and a transition from legacy data warehouses like Teradata. All right, thank you very much. 
And Pradeep, I'd like to open it up now for any questions uh, that the viewers might have. Thank you, Raghu. Just to remind viewers, you can enter your question using the chat function on the right of your screen. I see some questions have already come in. Raghu, feel free to address them in the order you prefer. Uh, let's see here. Um, let me go through and uh, here is one. Um, the question is, how long does it take to migrate a, a Teradata environment? I have a development, QA, and production, and it's about 140 terabytes of uh, compressed data. Um, the length depends on um, a few factors. Our approach uh, to migration is that uh, we will do an assessment uh, phase where we actually bring in the schema conversion and the assessment tool. And that typically takes about two weeks uh, to assess. And the output from that would determine um, the duration. Uh, in the past, uh, we have taken anywhere from three months to about six months, uh, depending on uh, the complexity of the tasks. And like I said during the talk, the majority of the time is spent uh, during uh, the manual conversion of maybe five to 10% of the artifacts that we have to. So I would say anywhere from three to six months is what it takes to do a proper conversion. Thank you for that question. All right, let's go down. Um, here is another one. Um, as a company, we have decided to move all of our data infrastructure and enterprise data warehouse to Azure, Microsoft Azure. What is your support uh, for Azure? Uh, as I mentioned in the presentation, uh, Actian Avalanche is a cloud data warehouse that is available as a fully managed service in the sense uh, we operate, upgrade, monitor, performance tune, backup, undercover, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, the Actian Avalanche cloud data warehouse environment uh, fully hosted in Azure. Um, we uh, have... Uh, uh, leveraged uh, the ADLS Gen 2 as our storage mechanism in Azure. And um, we use uh, specific instances uh, which are ideal for um, Actian Avalanche in Azure. So fully supported, managed data warehouse in Azure. All right. Uh, thanks again for that question. Um, the other one, uh, do you have any cost comparisons uh, compared to TD, uh, Teradata, um, with the Actian Avalanche as a service? Uh, yes, we do. Um, typically, uh, what we do is uh, our customers have come to us during refresh uh, cycles in um, when they have to go through refresh cycles in Teradata. Uh, where they have either a floor sweep type operation happening or any kind of upgrades to subscription licenses happening. And what we have been able to do is uh, beat the um, uh, beat the, the cost that it takes to upgrade to the latest uh, Teradata environments um, by quite a, a good margin and uh, also show ongoing cost savings year over year uh, in uh, by moving to Actian Avalanche. So um, there is definitely cost benefits uh, to it, and um, we can definitely get into the details as we uh, go through this. Uh, thanks for that question. And let me pick up one last uh, one here. Um, let's see. I have a Netiza environment, and do you support Netiza migrations? A uh, very good question. Thanks for that. Um, the target solution and the methodology for the migration from Teradata and Netiza are pretty much the same as we talked about, but they have a little bit different considerations um, in terms of uh, execution. So uh, this is timely in the fact our VP of uh, Sales Engineering, Paul Wolmerang, 
will be presenting a webinar uh, on this exact topic at Bright Talk uh, on the 22nd of October. I do encourage you to listen to that uh, particular uh, topic. Well, we don't see any more questions, so I think we can wrap it up there. Thank you, everyone, for viewing, and thank you, Raghu, for being such a great presenter. We hope you'll join us for a future presentation on this series. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.